Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Full Throttle Drive. Thank you, as always, for joining me on the channel. I'm so happy to have you and very excited to share with you some really cool news. Um, I have been following this news for a while now and trying to kind of gather more and more information, especially in the forums, but we are going to talk about the 2021 Viper. Now, uh, for any of you guys that uh, aren't huge Viper fans, the Viper is just kind of classic. I actually have a lot of uh, viewers and subscribers that are not from the U.S. And so the Viper, you may know of it, but you may not know just how iconic it is for the kind of classic American sports cars genre um, in the U.S. It really is a huge backbone up there with the Corvette. Um, but to give you a little bit of background information, uh, the first Viper actually debuted in 1991. There was a prototype in, in 89. And to give you some, you know, information on it, in 91, it debuted with a 8.0 liter V10 uh, that had 400 horsepower, 465 pound-feet of torque. Um, it was a monster back then, even even when it was, you know, up uh, beside like the Ferrari F40, um, it could hold its own with a 0 to 60 of about 4.1, 4.2 seconds. Um but it was a lot to handle. Uh, it came with almost no creature comforts, um, no air conditioning. It had a canvas roof, um, kind of zippers on the side to get in and out of. You could even get like this, uh, you know, fake glass for the windows. And just to add a little bit to the handful it already was, it had no traction control, anti-lock brakes, or airbags. Um, it certainly was a car that was begging to be driven, yet could really, um, you could find yourself in a lot of trouble in it very quickly. And uh, Vipers have always been known to be the car that you can get in a lot of trouble. You can really hurt yourself, obviously kill yourself very easily in a Viper with all of the power, um, especially that just insane amount of torque that the driver has always had to have been aware of before they just jump in the car and take it for a spin. But uh, since 1991, uh, the Viper is always done solid. Uh, it's always had um, new generations and it's actually gone all the way through the fifth generation, which ended in 2017. Um, now, it doesn't have the production numbers like the Corvette. Um, however, um, again, it just kind of holds this holy grail notion that a Viper is a Viper and it has always looked so cool. Uh, growing up, I got to say, I loved the look of Vipers. Um, Corvettes looked cool. There's something about the Viper, the body style, just the over aggressiveness and the sound. It was just always uh, something incredible to see when you saw one on the road. So even though it wasn't outlandishly expensive, there certainly were uh, high-end Corvettes that cost it pretty much the same. Um, it was still, uh, you know, it just still was in its own kind of realm um, as far as the car genre goes. But in 2017, the fifth generation ended. And so with that, um, obviously the rumor mills started already working. Like, hey, when is the next one coming out? When's the next generation? And, you know, Dodge has had a lot of success um, with their Hellcat lineup, even the Demon, the Dodge Demon, um, their Challengers, their Chargers, just in general, have done very well for the brand. And so that has kind of held them, I think, over because the, you know, the whole Dodge brand, even, uh, you know, the whole company itself are working on other products. They're trying to work on the European markets. I, even, I think even Maserati's working on like some all electric uh, cars over there. They have their, you know, sights on other aspects of the car market. However, the Dodge Viper, again, still sits in an, a realm where they have to, you know, they have to respect that it needs to continue to live its life. There's still lifespan in it. And uh, so a lot of people are advocating for a new car. And I think Car and Driver is the one that kind of broke the news here this year that they are, in fact, working on the next generation, which would be the sixth generation. Um, and it's going to be very, very cool. Now, before we step into the new sixth generation 2021 Dodge Viper, I do want to say the previous generation Vipers, again, as I said, were very cool. But one of the coolest aspects that I kind of missed just briefly here was the ACR racing packages. Now, for any of you guys that are not familiar with ACR, it's a aerodynamics kit um, that you could add to the car. Um, it kind of was a deal between Dodge and ACR. Um, they just went hand in hand. ACR Vipers are incredible. They're not just fast, they are track animals. From what I've found, 
the ACR Viper is the fastest time around the Nurburgring officially. Now I know there's, you know, the ZR1 is probably going to have an official time and uh, a lot of these other cars are going to have official times coming up and debuting, but so far as the ranks sit, the ACR at 7 minutes 1 seconds, and actually it probably was even faster than that, I, I read some of your guys' comments and I guess they, uh, um, you know, they had some difficulties with the car and so it could have been even faster, but nonetheless it is a very, very quick car and very capable and that's a lot has to do with the ACR package, and it looks incredible. I've had the uh, the luck to see several ACR Vipers in my life, and they are as crazy looking as they are around the track. But I think we are going to be looking at another ACR package coming for the new Dodge Viper. I think that's just granted. But let's go ahead and move on to what we want to talk about, the 2021 Dodge Viper. Um First things first, it is probably not going to have the iconic V10. And that V10, even back in 91, um, it was actually helped and developed with Lamborghini. It was a beast of a V10. It was absolutely a significant factor in what made the Viper so iconic. That V10, it's just hard to beat. And flipping up that front hood, um, just, just revealing that incredible size of an engine, uh, it really is, uh, it just adds to the euphoria of the Viper itself, but unfortunately it sounds like they are going to be ditching the V10 for a uh, aluminum or aluminum uh, V8 naturally aspirated engine. We don't know how many liters, we don't know um, exactly all of the specifications, but we do know it's going to be a naturally aspirated V8 as the base model. However, from what I've read, this V8 is going to be an updated engine reworked from what the Hellcat uses, that 707 horsepower uh, supercharged V8. However, the first variant being naturally aspirated will probably have 550 horsepower. The second will be supercharged, more like the Hellcat. Um, sits at and it's going to be at least 750 horsepower so that second variant is going to be an absolute beast an animal but you, guys 550 horsepower in a, a lighter weight car like a Viper isn't going to be no slouch it's going to be an absolute contender with a lot of cars out there and I'm very you know excited to see it from what I've read there's a good chance that the uh, the debuting of the concept car is going to be at the 2019 North American International Auto Show that's in Detroit. And I've told you guys, I want to go to that. I'm going to the LA Auto Show. That's in less than a month now. I cannot wait. I want to go, though, to the Detroit. I'm trying to get to, um, uh, I got another YouTube buddy, um, C Gardner Speed 252 awesome guy. If you haven't checked him out, check out his channel. He's got an awesome Grand Sport um, but I'm trying to kind of get him to go. I'd like to go, um, even if it's just me. I think I'm going to try and make it out there because there's also a chance that that's when the C8 is going to debut. But um, we'll keep on with this video. I don't want to get off topic, but I am trying to go to the 2019 Detroit Auto Show. It would be awesome. Um, last thing I want to talk about before I wrap up. Why, why are we bringing back the Viper? Not just because it's iconic, but why does it make sense? And I think the first thing that comes to a lot of people's mind is, now that GM is definitely debuting a mid-engine Corvette, GM is changing the name of the game the way they play. Now, they may end up keeping a front-engine vehicle. What I've read, GM um, is definitely probably just going to stick with the mid-engine design layout. They may end up having a front. Nobody knows you know, the answers until it's you know finally debuted and the, the information finally is released on that. However, if we are moving to the mid-engine design, which I'm thoroughly excited about, as you know, if you're you know, a subscriber of my channel, this is huge news for Dodge because now it opens up a, a new area for them, a rear-wheel drive, front-engined vehicle um, that the Corvette lineup has kind of moved out of. Buyers that are not going to want to feed off of the new mid-engine style that are going to want to leave the brand because of that. And there will be some people. I think most people will absolutely love the new C8 design. I think it's going to be a stellar vehicle, but it will not work for everybody. And some of those people that don't want to go with an older generation Corvette, you know, the C7 will be a great alternative if people aren't happy with the C8. But if they want something brand new, something newer, the 2021 had Dodge Viper has a great area to now nestle itself in to find new buyers and open up the landscape for people that originally would have just bought a Corvette. So 
I think that is a huge reason why the 2021 new Dodge Viper um, is going to definitely debut and they're going to continue to work on that. Dodge knows what they have and I think they're going to continue to feed on that. So that leads me to believe that with Dodge seeing this gap or, uh, you know, void left by Corvette as they're leaving the front engine lineup going to the mid-engine, I definitely do not think the Viper will be mid-engine. And honestly, um, I think a lot of people would prefer it not to be. Um, the Corvette's been a long time in the making as a mid-engine. I think the Viper should stay um, as the iconic beast of a car, front engine, just high horsepower, tons of torque, rear wheel drive vehicle that it is. Um, but it, I, I certainly don't think it's going to go mid-engine. There's some really cool design layouts, and I think the thumbnail was really cool. But to answer the final question, I think it will stick as a normal Viper layout uh, going forward. Um, but let me know what you guys think. I love sharing this with you guys, as always. Um, are you curious? Do you like the Dodge Viper? Do you hate the Dodge Viper? It seems like there's definitely two camps there. Um, but nonetheless, it is definitely going to be a very cool car. I love the look of it. I'm sure you guys do as well. But leave your comments below. Subscribe if you have not already subscribed. But I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much, as always, for joining me. Hit that like button as well. Take care, and we'll see you next time.